Off the heels of the very first ever BPWF pay-per-view event out for blood. Ladies and gentlemen, this ain't just pro wrestling. This is Brutality. I am your host, Alex. And we're starting it off with some women's division action as the boss, Sasha Banks, looks to take on this woman known as Candice LeRae. Thank you for joining me. I hope you enjoyed Out for Blood last Sunday. It was a tremendous event. We saw all four of the first champions here in Brutality become champion. And my, 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 what a show that was in the main event. AJ Styles, after defeating Kevin Owens earlier in the night, defeated John Moxley to become the world champion of Brutality. And tonight he will be taking on... Minoru Suzuki in a non-title match. But right now, let's focus our let's put our attention on the match at hand between Sasha Banks, the boss, and Miss Candice LeRae. These two women were both eliminated eliminated in the first round of the women's championship tournament. Uh, Candice LeRae was eliminated by Asuka whilst Sasha Banks was eliminated by the woman who would go on to win the entire tournament, your first ever BPWF Women's World Champion, Tony Storm. So, both of these women looking to get back into title contention, looking to impress here tonight. As Sasha hits a neckbreaker and an elbow drop on Candice Lorette. Also, at Out for Blood, we saw the Undisputed Era. Kyle O'Reilly and Bobby Fish win the Tag Team Championships. And tonight, all four members of the NSP there, Kyle O'Reilly, Bobby Fish, Adam Cole, and Roderick Strong will be in action against The Bar, the team that Kyle O'Reilly and Bobby Fish defeated for the titles. And they'll be tag teaming with a team that they fought only a few weeks ago and defeated, the Young Bucks. So the Young Bucks and The Bar versus the NSP Era will be coming up next. And also we're going to have Luke Harper. The man who lost his match to Rob Van Dam for the Intercontinental Championship, he will be taking on Killian Dane. Now, with that all out of the way, we focus here as Candice LeRae takes the advantage over Sasha Banks and hits her with a neckbreaker, repaying her for what she did to her earlier. Goes for a dropkick. Sasha able to move out of the way. The two lock up. Sasha lifts her up. Vertical suplex takes her down. Austin Grab applied by Sasha Banks. David Gaff asked Candice LeRae if she wanted to give up. She did not. She got out of it. Now she's in the corner. Sasha puts her up on top. Oh, but Candice LeRae counters into a power bomb. Sunset flip power bomb off the top and a kick out from Sasha Banks. We saw Tony Storm use that against Sasha, and when she used it, when Tony Storm used it against Sasha, she wasn't able to kick out. That's how Tony Storm defeated Sasha. But tonight, Sasha able to kick out of it from Candice LeRae. Maybe Candice watched that match and wanted to do the same thing to get the win. Maybe she thought she won it there, but she didn't. Sasha Banks able to kick out. So that is very interesting. Maybe that's Sasha's way of trying to prove that she, if she had another opportunity against Tony Storm, she could beat her. Boston crab in again by the Boston native Sasha Banks, but Candice LeRae once, once more able to get out of it. She goes for a Northern Lights, so it gets ddt for her efforts. Sasha Banks climbs to the top rope. She leaps and lands with an elbow drop to the heart of Candice LeRae. Now oh, LeRae thrown to the outside by Sasha. LeRae's got a chair. Not the usual, you know, not how Candice LeRae usually acts here in her matches. Count of 13, she needs to get back into the ring. She's got a wooden board now. Candice LeRae bringing out a dark side inside of herself here tonight. So a side we've never really seen from Candice. Off the ropes she goes. Float over DDT to Sasha Banks. They lock up. Sasha with forearm to the face sends Candice LeRae down to the mat. Big punch to the face of Candice LeRae. She picks her up. Punch right to the back of the head. Candice LeRae is down. Sasha now goes for a move there, but Candice LeRae ends up countering. Put her in the corner, but Sasha Banks counters with a neckbreaker clothesline kind of combination there. The two lock up, and Sasha sent face first into the top turnbuckle. Now she's going to be put on top of the turnbuckle. Candice LeRae looking for a 
Northern Lights suplex off the top rope. Here's the cover. One, two, no. Sasha Banks kicked out. 15 minute time limit in this one. No rope breaks, no disqualifications. Candice LeRae went to go off the rope, but instead she just knocked David Calf down to the mat. And I think David Calf is bleeding and inadvertently knocked down by Candice LeRae. And he may not be able to recover here. If there's no referee, there's no way they can count the falls. Thankfully, it looks like David Calf is all right, minus the blood pouring from his face. Somehow, Candice Ray was okay after that. Now, Sasha Banks hits the board. Candice Ray slapped it out of her hands. Hurricane Rana from Candice Ray. And a double knee to the midsection. And now, look at Candice Ray. She's got that wooden board. She's going to look to use it on Sasha Banks. And she does DDT onto the board. Right onto the board went Sasha Banks' head. How is she still fighting back? She goes from behind. Candice LeRae counters with a back elbow. Drop kick by Candice LeRae. Sasha's back up. She's got the board. These two with a stare off in the center of the ring. Sasha goes to hit her with the board, but Candice moved out of the way. Candice in off the ropes. Sasha catches her with a hip toss, dropping her down on the board. She lifts her up again. Punch right to the face of Candice LeRae. Now from behind goes Sasha, but she gets caught. Victory roll. One, a two count. Sasha barely gets out of it. At 2.9, we've only got about four minutes left in this matchup. Sasha Banks punched to the face of Candice LeRae. She climbs to the top rope. Frog splash off the top. From behind, no back elbow from Candice LeRae. She's feeling it. Off the ropes goes LeRae. Catches Sasha with another float over DDT. That DDT has been her go-to move all night. Big knee to the midsection, and now she's got that board. And right into the back. The back of Sasha Banks. The boss is down. The boss is not in a good position here as Candice LeRae continues to drive that board into her. Now she throws Sasha off the ropes. Duck under. Off the ropes, and they both collide. Both women are down with about two minutes remaining in this match. They need to act fast. They need to be quick if they want to get a victory over the other. Standing suplex from Sasha Banks. She lifts up Candice LeRae. They lock up. They both go off the ropes and they collide again. Both women down once again. Candice LeRae's up first. She sends Sasha to the outside looking for a count at victory here late in the match. The desperation setting in for both women. Count of five. Sasha Banks able to get back into the ring. Now look, these two women trading blows with only a minute left. Sasha says no, no, no. Drop kick. She gets back up. Candice LeRae with a heel kick and Sasha's down. Knees to the midsection. They lock up. DDT from Sasha. Getting some payback from all the DDTs that Candice LeRae's hit tonight. Off the top with the frog splash. Is it over with 20 seconds remaining? No! Candice LeRae kicked out. Locks up. Big DDT on the board. She needs to hurry. She needs to act fast. The bell sounds. This one's over. She goes for a pin, but she is too late. It is over. Candice LeRae and Sasha Banks fight to a 15-minute time limit draw. In the end, no winners in this one. And that's very interesting. We'll have to see what happens, what the, you know, the outcome here of this situation is. But now it's time for an eight-man tag team match. Undisputed Era versus The Bar and The Young Bucks coming up next. All right, it's time. Eight-man tag team action. The unlikely team of The Young Bucks and The Bar. Two teams who, like I mentioned in our previous match, fought it out to see who would face Bobby Fish and Kyle O'Reilly and out for blood for the tag team championships. Cesaro and Sheamus would defeat the Young Bucks, but they would lose their Tag Team Championship match against the Undisputed Era. And here tonight, all four men are teaming together in a very unlikely team. But here comes the Undisputed Era, the World Tag Team Champions. And of course, they are looking to add more gold to their waists. Adam Cole and Roger Strong so far being without belts, but they are definitely looking to get some around their waist very soon and I'm very excited for this because this is history this is the first ever 
eight-man tag team match in brutality. So this one's going to be hectic. This one's going to be chaotic. This one is going to be good, folks. The bell sounds, and we are underway with Sheamus and Adam Cole starting it out as the legal men in this matchup. Sheamus, known as the Celtic Warrior, fights with the heart of a warrior. And Adam Cole, of course, never afraid to get down and dirty, never afraid to break the rules in order to get a victory. Sheamus tags out to his tag team partner, Cesaro, known as the Swiss Superman for his immense strength, as Kyle O'Reilly gets tagged in by Adam Cole. He's sent off the ropes by Sheamus. Sheamus forgets about him, and Kyle's left to just run the ropes by himself, but he gets hit with a brutal uppercut into the cover, quick cover, from Cesaro, but Kyle O'Reilly was able to get out of it. Kyle O'Reilly is a submission specialist, a striking specialist, and he tags out to Roderick Strong, and Cesaro tags out to Nick Jackson. Nick and Roderick, the two legal men. Roderick Strong, the messiah of the backbreaker. He'll break your back in two, and, and he can do that in more ways than one, whereas Nick, one of the most athletically gifted men in all of wrestling, along with his brother Matt as well. Roderick takes down Nick with a drop toe hold. He lifts Nick up to his feet. Nick with a forearm to the face and a hip toss, taking him down, and he tags up to his high-flying brother, Matt. Growing up, the Young Bucks big fans of teams like the Rock and Roll Express, like the Rockers. You can tell that they love Shawn Michaels with how many super kicks they like to do in tribute to the Heartbreak Kid in their matches. Here's the first cover of the matchup, a backslide from Matt, but Roderick Strong was able to kick out. Now look at this, these two trading strikes. Roderick with kicks to the midsection, punches to the head from Matt Jackson. Both women, uh, both men, I should say, still thinking about our last match, both men collapsed to Matt Jackson with a drop kick to the back of the head of Roderick Strong. Looks like Roderick's gonna tag out to Bobby Fish, another great submission specialist and striker. Of course, he has that fish hook submission hold that is devastating and leaves most of his opponents tapping out and begging for mercy. Look at this, some teamwork from the unlikely duo of Matt Jackson and Sheamus, a powerbomb neck breaker to Bobby Fish, and now Fish and Sheamus, the two legal men in the match. David Kath has his hands full here tonight with all eight of these men in this eight-man tag team match. 20 uh, or 30 minute time limit for this one, unlike the 15 minute time limit in our last match. I'll have to think about maybe not doing those 15 minute time limits in the future. We might be getting too many draws if uh, the comp with the competition that's here in brutality. It's not people don't go down quick here. The fighters here don't go down quick. Bobby Fish tags out to Adam Cole. And Sheamus tags back out to Matt Jackson. Sheamus takes down both men. And now, big kick to the face of Bobby Fish from Matt Jackson, but he gets taken down by Adam Cole, the leader of the Undisputed Era. And a man who lost to Kevin Owens in the first round of the World Championship Tournament. You know he's definitely going to want to be getting back into championship contendership. And in two weeks, he'll have an opportunity to, you know, really thrust himself into the main event again because he'll be taking on Tomohiro Ishii on the November 12th edition of Brutality. Now him, Adam Colby, uh, being him, and Sheamus throwing down here. Adam Cole off the ropes, big kick to the face. Stomp to the back of the head. Now they two lock up, super kick. Surprisingly, the first super kick of the match does not come from the Young Bucks and instead from Adam Cole. Sheamus tags out to Nick Jackson and speaking of super kicks, we could be getting some more of Nick back in the match. Uh, uh, suplex by Sheamus, pin from Nick, count of two and a kick out. Seven minutes, 50 seconds into this match. About, or about almost about a quarter of the way to, or a third of the way to the time limit. And with all eight of these men in the ring, with so much competition in the ring, I wouldn't be surprised if this one does go to another time limit. Could you imagine? First two matches of brutality ending in time limits, especially if this one would go all the way, that would be a 30-minute time limit. I could definitely see it as Nick Jackson tags out to Cesaro, him. And Cesaro looked for a double team, but Kyle O'Reilly was able to fight both men off. Uppercut, and now 
<coughs> excuse me, a base rake from the boots of Cesaro. Off the ropes goes O'Reilly, catches Cesaro with an elbow to the face, it looked like. Now O'Reilly and Strong double teaming. German suplex from Roderick, but Cesaro able to kick out. Now all four members of Sheamus and the bar, or the uh, bar and the Young Bucks team in the ring. All beating the hell out of Roderick Strong as he gets spun around. We saw this a few weeks ago when Cesaro and Roderick were one-on-one. -on -one. He got spun around right round many times. Sheamus catches him. Oh, look at that. Tandem offense from both teams at the same time. Two men from each team down. Two legal men, actually, and they're going to need tags after that. Both got dropped on their heads. Here we go. Matt Jackson and Kyle O'Reilly, I believe, are the legal men now. Big leg drop to the back of the head of Matt Jackson from Roderick Strong. Matt and Kyle lock up for him from Matt Jackson. Sends him off the ropes. Catches him with a drop toe hold. Now La Magistro Cradle. Cover it's one count. Before Kyle O'Reilly was able to kick out. O'Reilly grabs the leg of Matt Jackson and takes him down with a dragon screw. And now he tags back out to the leader, Adam Cole. Stomp to the knee from Matt Jackson. And now he focuses attention on the legal man, Adam Cole. Brings him closer to his corner. Now Matt Jackson from behind looks for a punch to the face, but Adam Cole able to move out of the way. Forearm to the face from Matt Jackson. Does connect, though. And now forearms from Adam Cole bringing the receipts here tonight. Adam Cole now working on the leg of Matt Jackson. Of course, if you work on the leg, they can't super kick you. Matt Jackson and Nick Jackson both get taken down from Adam Cole. Or by Adam Cole, I should say. Impressive that Adam Cole's been able to fight off both men. Super kick to Nick Jackson. And he is fired up about it. He went to go off the road, but uh, Nick Jackson are able to get up. Oh, he looked for Enziguri, but he get, got caught with a punch to the face. Here we go. Sharpshooter locked in. In fact, three of the four members on the Young Bucks and the Bar team use sharpshooter. And look at the craziness going at it happening here. As all eight men in the ring hitting each other with super kicks, with suplexes, heel kicks, all different kinds of things. I don't even know who the legal men are. You know, Matt Jackson's legal. Matt Jackson, Adam Cole, got a, he got him up on his shoulders. Doomsday device. Now Sheamus and Matt Jackson working together again. Double backdrop to Adam Cole. Adam Cole is taking a lot of punishment here tonight. You know, he wants to stay healthy for his match against EGE two weeks from now. But he just dropped Matt Jackson on his head. One. Now it gets broken up. All eight men back in the ring again. They're all beating the hell out of Sheamus. Oh, last shot on Cesaro, but he's not the legal man. Matt Jackson gets taken out by Adam Cole. I can hardly call all of this. Lamahi Straw from Adam Cole. One, two, is it over? 2.9 and Matt Jackson kicks out. Good Lord. This one's breaking down. This one's getting good, folks. Matt Jackson, the Rolling Hills. One, two, Bobby Fish, I believe. Tags out to Sheamus. Oh, look at this. Shinari by Matt Jackson. I believe that's what it's called. Not sure. Reverse blockbuster. That's what I'll call it. Adam Cole fights off both men. And now Bobby Fish and Sheamus, the legal men, going at it. What a crazy match. I can barely, you know, even commentate over this. It's just happening so fast. I'm fumbling all over my words. I apologize for that. And I apologize if I've gotten too loud for my microphone. <laughs> and I hurt your eardrums here tonight. From behind goes Sheamus catches them. Oh, brutal backbreaker to Bobby Fish. Goes through the bro kick. It missed. Fish was able to move out of the way just in time, but he gets taken down by a knee. Now, Sheamus, another backbreaker. Maybe trying to send a message to Roderick Strong. But Jackson, now's the legal man. He gets sent off the ropes in the knee to the head of Sheamus from Bobby Fish. Now, Nick and Fish going at it. Off the ropes goes Nick. Gets caught with a back fist tag. To the other half of the tag team champions, Kyle O'Reilly, double kicks to the knees of Nick Jackson. Lama, he scroll from Kyle. And a break up from Seamus. All oh, eight men in the ring again. Power bomb of Adam Cole. Kick to the back of the head of Kyle O'Reilly. Can't keep up, folks. Kyle O'Reilly fighting off Cesaro and Nick Jackson. Nick Jackson takes down Kyle O'Reilly. I believe. He 
and Cesaro, the legal men, a leg lock here applied to Cesaro, but it's broken up by Sheamus. All eight men back in the ring again. David Kapp has no chance to restore order in this one. This one's just going crazy. Look at that brain buster from Roderick Strong. And I believe, yeah, Nick Jackson is out. It is over, folks. No, Cesaro. Cesaro was the one who was out. I don't even know what happened to him, but he is out in the undisputed era. All four men show dominance over the Young Bucks and the bar here tonight with a brutal win here on Brutality. And speaking of brutal, next up we have two big men, two behemoths about to go at it. It's going to be a hoss fight when Luke Harper and the beast of Belfast, Killian Dane, go at it. Coming up next on Brutality. Do not go away. Here we go. I am very excited about this one. Luke Harper, of course, he's never in a good mood, but here tonight, he is not in a good mood at all. He was defeated by Rob Van Dam in one hell of a match, one of my favorite matches of the entire Brutality pay-per-view out for blood. And I had a lot of favorite matches on this show. In fact, all five of those matches, you know, all six, I should say, were probably going to be in my favorite matches of the year, but we have so much more Brutality to go. So, I mean... I don't know if I can even say that yet, but all those matches were great, but one match that really stuck out was that Rob Van Dam and Luke Harper match. Of course, Luke Harper would be defeated by Rob Van Dam, as I mentioned before. Rob Van Dam, our first Intercontinental Champion. And you got to think, the winner of this match might be thrusted closer to another shot at Rob Van Dam's title. Of course, Killian Dane and Luke Harper fought each other in that triple threat with Minoru Suzuki to get the opportunity to go to Out for Blood in that Intercontinental Championship match and that sparked the idea in my mind for this matchup to happen here tonight. Killian Dane and Luke Harper going one on one. Quick cover here from Killian Dane but a kick out from Luke Harper. Luke Harper sends him off the ropes but he gets squashed by Killian Dane. They lock up. Harper looks to lift up Killian Dane. Killian Dane counters with a suplex of his own. Killian Dane shoots the half, sends Luke Harper off the ropes, but Harper grabs onto the ropes to stop the momentum. He takes down Killian Dane. Gator roll here into a submission. Killian Dane was able to get out before choking out. Off the ropes goes Dane, but Luke Harper back to his feet. Luke Harper with a uh, big uppercut. Looked for a super kick, but it did not connect. Instead, a knee to the midsection in this match, going exactly how I had expected. These two men bringing the pain to one another with some hard shots and big slams. Cover here from Luke Harper, kick out from Killian Dane, the two lock up, big uppercut, European style from Luke Harper. He looks for a move there, Killian Dane countered for a second, but Harper with a great counter landing, all of his body weight and Killian Dane looking for a power bomb, but he gets sent all the way to the outside and he landed right down on his neck. Now Harper's got a chair, but it might End up being bad for him as Killian Dane now with a suplex. Harper got another chair. He takes him down. It's a count of 16, 17. He's out of the count. He's trying to choke Killian Dane out. 20. And this one's a draw. Both men counted out. They did not care about winning. They just wanted to beat the hell out of each other. And I don't know. I think I might want to... I might. I think that's. T I think these guys need to run this one back. Maybe with no countouts. Maybe it'll be a death match. I don't know. But right now it's time for a main event: Minoru Suzuki versus the champ AJ Styles. All right, it's time. One of the most dangerous men in all of wrestling. One of the most. Well, he. L let's face it. He is the scariest man in all of wrestling. Every time he comes out, I wet my pants a little bit. Yes, let me check. They are very soaked right now. It is Minoru Suzuki. And, I mean, look at his nameplate there. It says attitude problem. He definitely does have one. But don't say that to his face because he will murder you. And here comes the leader of the newly reformed Bullet Club. And the man who is your first ever, your inaugural BPWF World Champion. You see it right there on his nameplate. The phenomenal one, AJ Styles, and he has decided to go it alone here tonight. 
Some people thought that him having Luke Gallows and Carl Anderson outside in that semifinals match with Kevin Owens well, gave him too much of an advantage. He wants to prove those people wrong here tonight by going it alone against Minoru Suzuki. And if he can beat Suzuki cleanly, one-on-one, -on -one, mano y mano, toe-to-toe -to -toe heat will show the world that he really is phenomenal. The two lock up and a new to the midsection from Minoru. Now he has AJ down. AJ able to get out of it, though. Or Suzuki may hit harder than anyone in all of professional wrestling. Sometimes when he hits those forearms on his opponent, the noise it makes is just thickening. The sound of his forearm being driven into the face, into the neck, the head of his opponents. It just sounds like a whip. That's how bad it is. DDT there from Styles. So I was definitely going to want to stay away from the strikes of Suzuki as much as he can here tonight. And of course, that gotch-style pile driver that Suzuki likes to use is absolutely insane and ends up leaving most of his opponents with a trip to the hospital and a hefty hospital bill in their mail. Knees to the midsection from Minoru Suzuki and here comes the sleeper hold. But AJ Styles able to get out of it. Of course, he's put many to sleep with that sleeper hold has Minoru Suzuki. But often he likes to go for the gotch style pile driver afterwards and sometimes that ends up being a bad thing for him. His opponent's able to counter it sometimes, and it costs him the match. But we will see if that happens here tonight. But, of course, if he wins a, a, this match against AJ Styles, pins the champ or submits the champ, wins by count-out, whatever, he would, of course, have a championship match down the line. That's how it works here in Brutality. You pin the champ, you get a championship match. Now, AJ has Minoru, but Minoru catches the arm of AJ and almost breaks it over his shoulder. Forearms, there's those forearms from Suzuki. My God, he's just pounding AJ Styles in the face, but Styles able to desperation. You know, it went for that desperation leg sweep. It worked, took down Minoru, but Minoru's right back at it with the knees. And now back again on the leg of AJ Styles. No rope breaks are going to help him. AJ, though, able to get out of it. AJ gets taken down by Minoru. Minoru picks him up. Big forearm to the face, and Styles collapses. Choke hold applied. God, Styles is not looking good here tonight. The champ is being dominated by the man who calls himself the king of professional wrestling. Now Styles, though, looking to choke out Minoru with a dragon sleeper hold. Shades of Tetsumi Fujinami, the man who invented that hold. Lock up here. Knee to the midsection from Minoru Suzuki. Might have caught a little bit of the face as well. DDT from AJ Styles, and both men are down on the mat. They lock up. Guillotine submission hold applied from Minoru Suzuki. David Kapp asking AJ Styles if he wants to submit. He does not. He gets out of it. He gets sent into the corner by Minoru. Minoru continuing to stop a mud hole in the midsection and the, now the face of the phenomenal AJ Styles. And he don't look phenomenal right now. PK. That could be it. One. Two count. And a three. No. AJ I thought. I thought that was it. I thought Styles was about to lose his first match as champ. Now Styles bringing the pain to the knee of Minoru Suzuki, but Suzuki kicks a Styles in the face to get out of it. He goes for forearm, it missed. Styles with a punch right to the head. Look for a kick, it missed. Another punch to the head. Both men off the ropes. Minoru from behind. Look at this. Backdrop driver! Dropped AJ right down on his neck. That was brutality. Off the ropes, both men go. Drop kick from Suzuki. Styles though moved out of the way. Forearms to the face of Suzuki. Oh, he's putting up the two sweet for the Bullet Club. Here it comes the Styles Clash. No one's kicked out of it. There it is on the Brutality logo. One, two, and three. Wait, no! Minoru kicked out. Minoru Suzuki kicked out of the Styles Clash. Are you kidding me? He's the first man in Brutality to do that. Good lord, what a match. Big clothesline from AJ Styles. Now AJ gets sent to the corner from, or by Minoru. Minoru with a big kick to the face of Styles. He grabs Styles. Knee to the midsection, but Minoru's gassed. He needs to get his, his uh, breath back. He needs a breather. Big brain buster from Styles. Suzuki up. 
Phenomenal forearm! The cover! One, two, three! The champ is phenomenal! And a phenomenal victory over Minoru Suzuki in the main event of this very, very awesome edition of Brutality. And folks, this show just gets better week in and week out. I get better at commentary. The wrestlers get better at wrestling. Even though it seems impossible, they get better. What a match. What a main event. What a card. What a show. We saw two draws in this episode. One by time limit draw. One by count out. It was a hectic night of brutality. But I am thankful that you tuned in and checked it out. Please like the video. Comment your thoughts and subscribe for more brutality on Tuesdays. And I... We'll see you later.